Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into the world of microservices and exploring how to simplify distributed tracing and monitoring using the latest technology. We will be working on Spring Boot 6 and integrating with Zipkin for distributed tracing and micrometer for efficient monitoring. Let's understand what is distributed tracing and why do we need one. Not too long ago, during the era of monolithic development and dominance, practicing agile development was quite the hurdle. The routine involved coding, pushing code updates and patiently waiting through an extensive QA and testing process. Finally, a new version would emerge and but this happened only every few months or sometimes even years. Deployment was monitored centrally and auditing tool focused on a single application. Fast forward to today and the landscape has shifted. Engineering teams have transitioned to developing microservices. This has made development fast and exciting and allowing dev team to be more agile. However, the distribution of services came with more complexity. A new challenge has emerged and how to find the root cause of issues fast. Yes, if you are thinking, can logging not solve this issue? The answer is no, because solution like metrics and logs are limited in their abilities. And when it comes to microservices, while they still provide insight about the application, they lack important information about the interaction between the services. Let's understand with the help of the story. Imagine you are the captain of the ship which is made up of a lot of small parts and robots and each doing its specific job. The captain of the ship wants the ship to be ready for the launch and it has specific tasks. He goes and asks his lieutenant to go and start the ship and start the launch procedure and the lieutenant goes and says, tells all, all the robot to follow the launch procedures. So each of the robot is supposed to do a specific job and supposed to report back on whether they are done with the job and is supposed to ask the next robot to begin the job. Each robot is supposed to finish his job and then inform the next robot to begin the next stage in the procedure. The fixing of the fuselage or firing of the booster cannot happen until the ship has been cleaned thoroughly. So they need to inform each other. So robot goes and supposed to pass this message on so that the launch procedure can proceed successfully. But what happens throughout the time is that as the time goes by and the captain comes and asks what is the hold, the captain has absolutely no idea what went wrong, whether there was a delay or something is happening and he has no idea what to do. Switch back to the world of micrometers and microservices. In the world of coding, especially with microservices, we have something similar. Distributed tracing is like giving each part of our code or small robot and these robots carry a tiny trackers to inform and your lieutenant also has a tracker monitor where he can go and see what exactly is happening. So this time the situation is different because at this point of time the captain has provided tracker to each and every robot. One robot that takes up a task, finishes the task and sends a signal to the next robot to begin the next sequence of the launch. And lieutenant on the other hand has a copy of every signal that is being passed from robot to robot and so when the captain asks what's the hold up he has an exact answer on what went wrong and why the sequence has been stopped or the launch is slow because in this case one of the robot has went off to sleep. All right let's talk about micrometer. Micro, imagine micrometer as a superhero kit in the realm of coding. It's like having a set of special tool that help us keep eye on our microservices and how they are performing. Uh, so what exactly is a micrometer? Think of it as a toolbox for developer or a set of tools that simplifies the way we measure, observe our microservices. Micrometer provides a vendor neutral application of metric facade. Now don't let the fancy word intimidate you. It essentially means that micrometer gives a consistent way to measure and observe our code no matter what tools or platform we are using. Now within the superhero toolkit, there's a powerful tool called observation API. This is like a special feature within micrometer. Picture it as magic code or set of instruction that we use in our code just once. And the best part is it brings bunch of benefit. The observation API helps us count those actions, measure the rates, keep track of sizes, even measure the time. All are crucial aspect when we are developing the microservices. But 
how does micrometer fit into the world of microservices here's the exciting part micrometer is designed to work seamlessly with different part of microservices system it's like a universal translator that speaks the language of each component when we use micrometer in a microservices it's like giving a project an extra boost micrometer becomes an ally and friend and helping us understand how our microservices are performing a bit like a friendly assistant giving us insight into the health of our code let's understand what we are going to be building in this project we are going to be building three services a parent service child service and a grandchild service parent service is going to pass the message to the child service to say hi to the grandchild and child service is going to pass it message on to grandchild and grandchild is going to respond back after we build this services we are going to look at the logs and understand why just putting in a specific log information is not going to solve the problem then we're going to use the micrometer and understand the observability api we're going to look at why spring chose to move away from sleuth to micrometer after we added the micrometer we are going to use zipkin dashboard to understand how the message flows from one end to the other how the values are tracked what are the time taken by each event and each services we're going to understand what is a trace id and span id let's go ahead and create a new project now we are going to name this project as parent service and we'll go to leave it as java project leave it as groovy and we're going to change this to com.java habit that's also my blog so please do visit jdk is 17 we're going to leave that as is packaging jar we're going to leave that as is and click next we'll choose spring web and lombok from this project that's all is needed and we can click create now let's go ahead and create a new project again this time we're going to create a child project so we'll start we'll name this project as child service child service again everything remains the same we're going to change the group to com.java habit and we're going to proceed next we're going to choose the same packages spring web lombok then create open it this in the new window next we'll create another new project called grandchild service so we're going to create new project call it as grandchild grandchild service we're going to leave everything as is just change the package name back to com.java habit click next and we'll choose the same packages again spring web and lombok uh, maybe lombok not needed we'll see that all right so we have created the three projects now let's go ahead and add some code to that there's our grandchild project Let's go ahead and open our application property. We're going to rename this as application.yaml. Rename application properties. We're going to rename as YAML file. And now we need to add some details in there. So first thing we're going to add is a context path. And we're going to call this as grandchild service SVC. Then we need to add port number port number is in port let's call this as port 5050 we're going to add the application name application name and we're going to call this as grandchild next we are going to go and add a package called controller And within this package, we're going to create a controller class. We'll call this as grandchild controller. Next, we're going to add SLF4J. 
it's not showing up let's go ahead and add it and we'll fix this later next we're going to add restful controller let's check our build.yaml build.gradle file to see if lombok is there i guess we forgot to add lombok in there so let's go ahead and add lombok Let's go ahead and add a service uh, at AutoWired and we are going to call this service as GC service. Uh, this is a service which we're going to create in a while, but let's just go ahead and add this. We're going to add get mapping and we will, let's name this as URI as slash grandchild. And now we're going to create a public string, public string, call this method as say hi, which is not going to take anything since it's a plain get call. We're going to log some information and we'll say grandchild was called. Remember we're working in the grandchild service, okay? And this is service is going to return service dot create high we're going to create this method as well that's it let's go ahead and create a service class we'll create a package called service and inside service we'll create the class gc service here we're going to annotate as add service annotation and we'll create the method that we defined earlier which will return string and the method is called create high. It's a really simple method. We are simply going to return a string value, which will say high from grandchild. Hi grandchild. We're going to fix some annotations. That completed our grandchild service. Let's go ahead and update our code for child service now. We're going to follow the same procedure. Rename the file to application.yaml. And we're going to add the same old properties, port number, context name, and application name. Server port, we're going to call this as 6060. And the context path will be child slash service. And we'll name the, uh, oh, we forgot to add quotes here. So let's fix that here in the grandchild service. And let's add the application name now. And we'll call this as child. Why we're calling this as child, you'll know a little bit later when we start looking at the logs. Let's go ahead and create the controller package. We'll create the class now, a new class, and we're going to call this as child controller. Uh, we will go ahead and add our risk. Uh, controller and SLF4J class for logging. That's added. Now here we need to add the REST template. So let's go ahead and add the comment uh, that we'll be using the REST template. REST template to call the grandchild class. Let's introduce a uh, final rest template and we can do it as a auto wire but if that's not the preferred approach so we are going to create it as a constructor and pass it to the controller class so let's go ahead and create that rest template and we're going to assign this 
this dot rest template equals rest template next we are going to add the get mapping again and this time we are going to call it slash child now we are going to add the response entity which is going to return string because the we are getting a string from the grandchild class so we are going to do that uh, we are going to call the exchange from the rest template method and now we need to pass the parameters the first one is the URL so we are going to add HTTP localhost and the port number was 5050 slash grandchild service slash grandchild next we need to define what type of method this is it's a get next one is null because we're not passing anything and the return type is string.class that needs to be mapped so we add string.class and we are going to return the we're going to extract the response body so we're going to create a field called response from grandchild and get the response dot get body which will give us a string value and now we are ready to return this value back to the parent class now that we are done with the child service let's work on the parent service we have renamed the file again to application.yaml we'll add the port number and the context path context path in this case is parent service Let's go ahead and add the port number now. Port number here, we're going to call it as 7070. And we're going to give the application name as parent. Application name, we're going to call this as parent. Let's go ahead and add a new controller. First, we're going to add a package controller. Inside that package, we will create a class called parent controller parent controller is created let's go ahead and add the annotation rest controller slf4j and now we're going to add the rest template because we need to call our child service for that we will need the rest template so let's go ahead and add rest template and i'm just taking a shortcut here i'm not putting it in the constructor method but i have a shortcut that i can do that quickly and with that i can just go and update that so now that rest template is added let's add the get mapping and in get mapping we're going to call this mapping as a parent and we're going to create a simple method that is going to return back a string say hi we're going to log information that information is going from parent to the child and we're also going to add another entry if needed but for now this is enough parent was called three dots and we'll add one more where we are going to tell that say hi to grandchild this is for our own logging purpose i just want to show you how logs look like uh, with this you'll also understand the span id what a span id is when we start looking at the observability api so we're going to create response entity the procedure is the same we are going to call the rest template exchange method and are going to put all this values that are needed. Next, we're going to capture the response that's coming from the template body. So we're going to create a string and extract the response and return that value back. Now we're seeing this rest template that showing an error. That's because we forgot to add the bean. We have to return the rest template from the rest template builder. So let's go ahead and add rest template builder here. 
Now we can copy all this and paste it in all the three projects. We'll now start the Spring Boot project and let's open our Postman. Let's access the URL now. We'll fix the port number. So I'm getting the information back from the grandchild. Let's fix that for the child as well. We're going to copy the same information from application.yaml and the resource is called child service. We're going to copy that, put it in the URI, fix it, and this information is called child. I think we made a mistake or the port number is missing. So let's fix the port number. So that's information coming back from child. And now let's go ahead and add the parent. The URL is the same. We just need to update the port number. And that information is present in the application.yaml. It's called the parent. So that we have checked application YAML. We copy the service parent service. And you copy this and the port number is 7070. Let's update the port number first, 7070. And update the URI to parent service. And it's called slash parent. So I'm getting a response back, All right? So let's go ahead and check the logs. So I can see information is coming at parent was called, say hi to the grandchild. Same way I can see the information for the child and information from the grandchild. Let's hit it again. I'm going to show you something. Right now when they're called, there is no, I cannot connect the logs. See, so called three times. Uh, let me just clear it, clear all the logs to do this one more time. And if I hit it three times, of course, I'm going to see the log coming in for three times for child one, for child, this is for the second call and this for the third call. The problem with this approach is, yes, I can see, but in case of a multi-user scenario, I would not be able to track this down on whether a particular call is for coming from user one, user two or user three. So if you've been following Spring Boot 6 changes, according to Spring Boot 3, Spring has moved on to Micrometer because they built a new observable ability API instead of sleuth they are now recommending to move to micrometer and that it has built in support for logging correlation. Before we begin fixing the problem of log correlation let's look at high level life cycle of micrometer. It has five different events start which tells when the event has started, stop when it ended and it has an error event for error scenario and a scope which keeps track of a scope of an end to end event when the parent trace ID hops over various span ID which is nothing but a unit of work. Each observation in the end-to-end -end call has metadata in key value pair which is used to tag to queries for those events. Now to do the setup we need few dependencies. We will skip this particular section now because we'll be using annotation to do that. So let's take a look at the dependencies that are needed. The first dependency that you will need is Spring Boot Actuator AOP, which is going to give us access to the annotation at observe. So we're going to add that. Then we need a Prometheus metrics dependencies for tracking. Then we are going to use the tracing for uh, Brave, that is for Zipkin, next for the logs. And we have to add some of the properties in the YAML file that we're going to see how to add those. So let's go ahead and make the changes now. I am going to go my build.gradle. Now I'm going to add all the dependencies that have been defined on the spring changes blog. I'll go ahead and add the implementation for the first one and then I'll quickly go ahead and add. I'm going to fast forward the video from here so that you don't have to stick through, watch me type. I'll go ahead and add the same dependency in all the three projects and I'll fast forward again. Now that all the dependencies have been added, let's go ahead and create a configuration class. I'm going to create it in this main package. 
itself and call it as observed config. And inside this observed config, I'm going to provide annotation as configuration because it's a configuration I'm putting in a observation API. So I'm going to follow exactly as they've specified in the spring block. And the first thing I'm going to add is add a bean for the observability API, add all the imports and we fix this one, right? And now I'm going to copy the same file in all the other projects as, as it's needed. So I'm going to fast forward one more time. Now that all the values have been added, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add all the values that needs to go in the application.yaml. Basically the uh, Prometheus information, the logging pattern. So I'm going to add that and basically I'm just going to copy from the spring blog all the values. So this is the logging information. I'll just go ahead and add this. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to copy this exact same information in all the three projects. So let me just fast forward and get to the point. Now let's go ahead to our classes where we want to inject the observability API. We're going to use the at observed annotation as I had shown you earlier. You can also add it as a bean if you want, but I prefer to use an annotation. So we're going to provide the name user.name here. So what this is going to do is it's basically going to pull the information that is present in your application dot project name. So in our case, if it's grand shell, it was called grand shell. If it's parent, it was called parent and then we're going to give it a context name. Uh, this is for our own purpose. If, if you want to track it in the tracing logs, we can use this information. This is a primary information that you will be looking when you're looking at the Zipkin dashboard and it'll give you an idea what exactly is happening. So we're going to give the uh, context name as grandchild service and we're going to use a low cardinality measure over here and you can read more detail upon uh, what is a low cardinality and what is a high cardinality on the blog. Uh, I'll just show you on the page what that means but let me just put the value in here. So this information is done and now I'm going to copy it over through all of the three projects, other two projects. Before I do that, let's take a look at the documentation as I promised that we'll take a look at the low cardinality and high cardinality. So if you go in the documentation, what it says over here is high cardinality is used when you have more than one or the key value pair can be anything like, for example, a user number that can be any value. So if you have a lot of values in there, use high cardinality. In our case, it's a low cardinality because in our case, we are simply using a get call. So I'm going to just add that and now I'll go ahead and copy this into all the other projects. So all the files are now updated. I'm going to go ahead and start the application. Let's hit it from the postman. I'm able to get the response back. Let's take a look at the log. The log will show you an error for Zipkin, which we haven't started yet, that it is not able to pose a trace log to Zipkin. That is should be running on 9411. But for now, we'll ignore that. We'll take a look at how the log looks like. This is how the log is coming in for the grandchild. And that's the application name, the trace ID and the span ID. Span ID is basically the amount of work done. So anytime you are making a call, you're making a DB call or wherever you go to place the, uh, the value of the observed annotation, it is going to be treated as a span ID. Anytime a call is going in, anytime you're logging, it's going to be considered as a span ID, amount of work done. So same, same way you can see this is for child, child was called and you'll see that the trace ID is same, 
but the span id is going to be different for each of the tasks that's why they're uh, the numbers are going to vary from microservice to microservice let's look at another one again we go in there and we are going to hit the this is the parent call so let me let me check the value of the parent uh, everything looks good here and I will go ahead and hit the parent now and I should see a call to the parent so now if you see this is the parent and that value is coming from application spring name this is the tracing ID this is going to be common across all the three microservices right so this was the call which you made made if you go and look at all of the other three it's going to match exactly the same so in the grandchild also that value matches that tracing ID is common and the span ID of course is going to be different span ID is the amount of work done so same way over here as well two entries two different span IDs okay looks good all right let's go and start my docker now I just opened up docker while it loads you will need to install the zipkin on the docker I'll show you how I've done that it's already downloaded on mine so I'm not going to download again but if you don't have it you can go and search for zipkin if you see the name exactly as is so I'm going to type zipkin and I think it will show up as second option out there uh, that's the one which you need to download and run on your machine so in my case since I already have it I'm simply going to run it and now I'm going to look at the logs so I have opened up the URI it's on 9411 uh, for that I first need to place one more request via postman so let me do that and there you go send the request is placed from hi from grandchild let's take a look at the tracing ID now so I'm going to copy this tracing ID and search it in the logs so search by tracing ID and there so you can see the all the different entries how the call goes from parent to the child and so on and so forth so for each log info you see that uh, uh, the name which is showing up that's parent child that's coming from the metadata that we have posted and then we have the information which is coming in from this section right and if you if you click you should see on the right hand side the span ID and all that and you'll find that same entry in all of them so if you go from the top to bottom you can trace all the way back how much time it's taking what time it was triggered and all that in information is present on the right hand side of the screen you can see the span ID and the parent ID let's understand how these are all related so let's take another example we are going to create one more ID uh, go and look at the values uh, here's the tracing ID that we got uh, let's search this tracing ID and we got the tracing ID over here all right so if you look at the first one that's the first entry into into our system so we have got the tracing ID this is the beginning of the e event and for each of these event it is going to pass the parent ID as the first entry of the tracing ID so that's our parent ID and this is a new tracing ID new unit of work okay and so now that span ID becomes the parent ID for the next task so if you see there that's the parent ID and, and span, span ID if, if you search for that value so span ID becomes the parent ID for the next one you see here and this is a new unit of work so it's a new span ID now this span ID will become the parent ID for the next call or the next 
handover. So here is the that becomes a parent ID and we've got a new span ID and this span ID will become the parent ID for the next task. Simple. So let's look at what else you can do with this. So if you look at this dependency button, when you click on this dependency, it will tell you how the call is actually flowing from one micro service to the other. So in here it is parent to child to grandchild. You can also see by individual item that how does a call flow from parent from what is the from and to information. This is helpful if you have a really complicated service, you want to see the overall picture, you can do that. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can look at all the different call. It will give you the total time. You can click on show and it will give you the exact breakup. And you can also look at it as a table format. Again, the, it has different span IDs. You can look at those span IDs and how much time each of those span IDs is actually taking. Uh, the values which are, which are in there, you'll see there that you should be able to find them in your uh, Zipkin dashboard. And all the entries that you have added, the metadata parent to child, child to grandchild that are helpful to trace different information that is flowing from one system to the other. And you also have more information on uh, if you want to filter down the query in the last 15 minute one hour. So you can do all of that on this dashboard.